Okay guys, we're looking at uh, the second part of properties of materials and we're looking at a whole bunch of graphs today. So the first kind of graph that we're going to look at is something called material selections charts and this is an example of one where we're looking at strength on the y-axis and we're looking at density on the x-axis. So um, you can see here that the strength here is measured in megapascals, so this is basically pressure how much pressure something can withstand. And, you know, down on this end, you're, you're looking at something that can't stand a lot of pressure, so we would call that weak. And something that's strong, it can withstand a lot more pressure. And then density. Density is going to give us a measure of the mass per unit volume. So this is the number of kilograms for a cubic meter of that substance. And, of course, you know, down on this end, you're going to get things that are, are less dense and therefore lighter, and things that are um, heavier and more dense on this side. And these, these charts are meant to help you pick the correct material for your particular um, design. So for instance, let's say that I'm looking for packing material that is light uh, and it doesn't need to be that strong. Well, I might want to be picking something from this area. So it doesn't it need to be weak and light, so I'd be looking at a foam down in this area. If I'm looking for something that is, I don't care about the density, but I want as, as strong as I possibly can, then I'm going to be picking up some, you know, alloys that are in this area over here um, and, uh, you know, towards the top of the chart. And if, especially if I don't care how heavy it is, then, you know, I would want to pick from that area. Now, if I want something that's light and strong, um, then I might want to be picking from, like, the composites or something like that in this area right here. So you got the strength and it's, it's relatively less dense. Here's another example of a, a material selection chart. We've got something that's strength. So again, just looking at strength. And now we're looking at cost. So you can see that um, in this case, you might be looking at trying to find something that is um, light and strong, or uh, and if you don't care, light and strong, but um, sorry, not light and strong, but uh, strong but low cost, then you'd be looking in this area. Something to consider is that these axes, the increments on this axis are not uh, linear. They are going up in sort of a log log uh, rhythmic scale. So for instance, you can see that, that, that as you go up on the major axis lines, um, you are going up by a factor of times 10. So 0.1 times 10 is 1, 1 times 10 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 100 is 1,000, and then 1,000 times 10 is uh, 10,000. And each of these gradation marks, each of these incremental increases here, the minor axis gradations, they're going up by uh, 1, but you can see that there are 10 of them in between 1 to 10. But they're not linear, and so they're, the distance between 1 and 2 is greater than the distance between 2 and 3, and 3 and 4, and 4 and 5, and 5 and 6, etc., all the way up to 10. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? Uh, and so, um, you know, here we're looking at 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10,000, okay? So those gradations right here are not linear. And so you'll have to pay attention to that as you're looking, right? So, you know, anything along in this area is between 1,000 and 2,000. If we want up at 9, uh, between 9 and 10, we would just be looking at the very top of this graph right here. And there are more charts um, in this link right here if you want to have uh, a look at different uh, charts that have different axes labels on them. Okay, next thing that we're going to look at is we're going to look at stress and strain graphs. So this is a stress and strain graph. And basically what this is showing is when something is elastic, this, this uh Straight line is, has something to do with elasticity and when something is plastic. So plastic is when it's starting to go into this curve right here. So let's look at the y-axis first. So the y-axis um, is uh, denoted with the, the Greek letter sigma, which is this one right here. And basically what it's showing is pressure. So we're measuring in newtons of force per square meter. And this is called a pascal. So how much newtons of force is applied in a square meter? And now what we're often measuring is not in, in single pascals, but in megapascals, right? So that is a million pascals, or it could even be gigapascals, which is now a billion pascals, okay? So um, that's usually what this is measured in. Okay, here we go. Strain is down here. 
and it's using this Greek symbol, and it's measured in this. So basically the way that we calculate strain is we look at the, the length, the change in the length. So when you, when you stretch something, so the change in the length compared to the original length. Okay, and that's going to be the, the uh, strain. Okay, the proportional limit is down here. It's the, marked with a P, and this is the point where they stress and strain curve where the linear elastic deformation transitions to the nonlinear plastic region. Okay, so anything here along this straight line and in this gray area down here is going to be elastic. What that means is, is that you can bend it and it will snap back to its original shape. Once you get past the proportional limit, you start to enter the, um, the plastic deformation. And at that point, this is where you will be um, changing the, the shape permanently. Okay, the yield point is the, the uh, stress be beyond which a um, material becomes plastic. So it'll be plastic at that yield point, not elastic. Remember, elastic means it snaps back. Plastic means that it's going to change shape permanently. Okay, the ultimate strength um, is the stress a material can withstand. So this is the ultimate stress that it can uh, withstand before it, it breaks. Okay, this area here is what we call plastic, sorry, elastic deformation. So again, it is going to be the point where things actually snap back to their original shape. So if you think of like a paper clip or something like that, if you bend it just a little bit, it's not going to uh, retain that shape. It's going to come back to its original shape. But if you bend it too much, it gets into the plastic region and it will not come back to its original shape. This area under here, underneath the curve, it should extend actually all the way out to here, um, is the um, plastic deformation. So in this, in this area, it's going to bend or change shape and, and stay with that shape. Okay. Now, there is something called Young's module. And essentially, it's just the slope of this line right here. Um, and basically, what it is is it's a measure of the stiffness of an elastic material defined by the stress and strain, right? So, you know, it will allow you to understand where things are along this straight line, okay? So the Young's modulus will allow you to understand that. Here's some examples of uh, some stress and strain glass graphs. So you can see that um, in this case, you know, the strain on something like a brittle polymer, it's not going to uh, require, it's, it's going to be able to handle a lot of stress, but not much strain. Okay, plastic, it's going to handle uh, stre uh, stress less well, but strain better, and something like an elastomer is going to handle the stress less well, but it's going to handle the strain better. Okay, here's an example of steel and aluminum, and you can have a quick look at those and also see um, now, this is the Young's modulus right here, which would tell you that actually it does not have a great deal of elasticity. Something that has a, a much shallower slope, so a much straighter line this way, uh, is going to have, um, it's going to be much more elastic than something that's got a very steep slope like this. And that's something that the Young's modulus, and it's basically the Young's modulus is essentially the slope of this line. So the steeper the slope, the less stress, well, the less strain that it'll, that it'll withstand before it becomes um, plastic. All right, thanks for watching.